Am I the asshole for not letting my friend bring his service dog over? What? My male 39 friend, male 38, recently got a service dog. This dog is a diabetic alert dog. The issue arises in that he wants to bring it to my house when I host hangouts or parties. I'm not much of a dog person and really don't want it at my house. It is a breed that sheds a lot and I don't want to have to deal with dog hair in my house and also my kids regularly play in our yard. So I really don't want them to encounter dog poop and pee. I've spent the last 10 years in this house turning it into a place my friends, family, and I could hang out. Am I the asshole for not letting my friend bring his service dog over? I've spent the last 10 years in this house turning it into a place my friends, family, and I could hang out. I have a pool, I built a bar in my basement, those type of upgrades. I even offered to meet out at a restaurant or someone else's place and host less, but my house is the preferred destination among everyone else. I have amenities that others don't and there are no expensive food and bar tabs at my place. I host a lot during football season and other major sporting events with some general hangouts in between. So I told my friend that his dog wasn't welcome but offered to pay for a monitoring device he can use while at my house. But let's just say he didn't take it well. Am I the asshole for banning my girlfriend from bringing my friend's ex over to my house? So recently a friend of mine, Anthony, and his wife Carly went through a pretty nasty divorce. They have a child about one and a half years old and things just weren't working between them. He felt things were getting monotonous and he was interested in pursuing other relationships. He then ended up finding a spark with a co-worker who is now his girlfriend. She did end up getting child support and alimony, but there were issues with how his family structures their trust. Still, even now, it's not like she's actually below the poverty line. I didn't think I'd be seeing much more of her, but my girlfriend has been getting together and commiserating with her for some reason. Am I the asshole for banning my girlfriend from bringing my friend's ex over to my house? So now their conflict is now bleeding into my life too. Now my girlfriend keeps bringing up how unfair what my friend did was and how he's barely paying anything while they struggle. She's constantly passive aggressive towards Anthony even though he hasn't done anything to her and has even brought Carly over while me and Anthony are hanging out. And when I say something, she says she's her friend and she's allowed to have guests. She's glad to know he's having fun playing video games with children, yes, calling us children, while she's exhausted taking care of her kids alone. But this is my house and I pay the bills and I don't want her here. I found my husband naked with his mom and then she punched me. Disclaimer is not my story, Thomas. Send me on Instagram. My mother-in-law is the most toxic, violent woman I've ever met. And she hates me because I married her perfect little boy. Everything started five years ago. My husband and I met on Hinge. Neither of us was looking for a serious relationship, but we ended up falling in love. We started going out on dates and every time we would go on a date, we would end up just spending a week together. Eventually, I got my dream job and I moved to New York City. I was working in fashion and making six figures a year. As you can imagine, my life was amazing. He asked me to be his girlfriend and we decided to do long distance. It was totally fine for the first couple of months he was the one that decided to drive five hours to come see me two months later out of nowhere he decided to propose but the thing is i wasn't sure if i should say yes we hadn't been together long and he was already offering to move to new york city with me my life was so good in new york i didn't know if i wanted him to come be with me when i said i wasn't sure his mother called me to convince me to marry him part two is up story time about how i found my husband naked with his mom and then she punched me disclaimer is now my story time with cinnamon instagram my mother-in-law calls me to convince me to marry her son and guess what she managed to convince me so i said yes he ended up moving to my apartment in new york city two weeks later and that's when my personal nightmare began my mother-in-law started coming over to our apartment every single weekend to plan the wedding but all she cared about planning was my husband's stuff for example she only wanted to go try on his suits we didn't even talk about my wedding dress and this woman had the audacity to plan the whole menu around his favorite foods one day she comes up to me and says this is the menu for the wedding without even asking me no i was not about to have corn dogs on the menu since we had a spare bedroom in our apartment she started to sleep over and she would tell my husband to sleep with her because apparently she was scared at night at this point she's planning the wedding my husband is sleeping with her and my family is paying for it part three is caught my husband naked with his mom and then she punched me disclaimer is not my story time with sending me on instagram after she took over planning our wedding we finally got married i was so busy with work that at that point i just didn't care for the next few years she started coming over to our apartment at least once a month and she would sleep over and sometimes my husband would sleep with her i told my husband that it was kind of weird that they slept together and he told me that it wasn't that they were just really close one night i'm sleeping and i hear noises coming from the guest bedroom i know that they're sleeping in there so i walk over and open the door that's when i see them fully naked and my husband had his arm around her shoulder then she runs over 
over to me and starts punching me. And then my husband tells me to get out. Then he gave me some bullshit excuse about how they're recreating childbirth. I kicked her out of the apartment and my husband got mad at me. I no longer have a relationship with her and I'm thinking about leaving my husband. She still comes to our apartment and just flat out ignores me. What should I do? Am I the asshole for leaving my girlfriend stranded and making her miss all of her classes? So my 22 female partner, 23 female, and I are both in college and live together in an off-campus apartment. I own a car, but she doesn't, so I drive us both to campus every day in time for my 9 a.m. class. The issue is she's never ready to leave on time, so we're always late by 5 to 10 minutes. I've communicated this to her many times, and she said she'll try harder. In the past two weeks, however, she's been making us over 15 minutes late. And you guys, I've tried everything to help her. Helping her pick out an outfit, making her breakfast, everything. But nothing works, so on to the incident. Am I the asshole for leaving my girlfriend stranded and making her miss all of her classes? Yesterday, she wasn't ready to leave until 8.55 a.m. and my class is at 9. I gave her an ultimatum. Either she's ready to leave by 8.40 tomorrow or I won't be driving her. I said that I wasn't mad and I can see her trying, but I have a difficult test tomorrow at 9. Well, this morning, she wasn't dressed at 8.40 and at this point, I was really frustrated. At 8.45, I said I was leaving and she said she needed a couple minutes. I told her I was leaving if she wasn't out by 8.50 and at 8.52, I drove off. She called me crying and apologizing and said she had no way of getting to school and she was going to miss her shift. Am I wrong for turning down my stepmother's necklace to her during my wedding? My stepmother, I use the term just for here, but to me, she's the woman my dad is married to, has always wanted a daughter. She has four boys with my dad. She was my dad's wife to me and my sister. We lost our mom very young, but neither of us were willing to have a second mom. We were both clear about this from the jump. This bothered her, but she just decided that she would just have babies with dad and get as many daughters as she could. Then, after boy number four, she was unable to have more, and I remember her telling us she hated us for denying her the opportunity to be a mom to daughters. Yeah, because that's your fault, right? That we didn't have a mom anymore, and she would have loved us and done everything to be a good mom. Years have gone by since then, and we really don't talk all that much to her, or our dad for that matter. My sister got married four years ago, but only invited me and her husband's family. Now it's my turn, and I did decide to have a slightly bigger wedding, and because of some pressure from extended family, I invited my dad and his family. Stepmother tried to give me her necklace for the wedding. She said it was something the woman and her family wear on their wedding day and they pass it down. She wanted to be able to pass it down, but I said no to it. This upset her and then the whole extended family heard about it. Now I'm being told that since I invited her, I should be more willing to accept this, even though I invited them because of the pressure put on me to. They told me I should be willing to treat them like family and be kind and go out of my way for them as such and it was cruel to turn down a sentimental item. So, am I the asshole? Well, I don't care how sentimental that shit is. If I don't like it, I don't like it. I'm not wearing it. Simple as that, regardless of who it came from. Am I the asshole for telling my husband that if he stopped working, I'd lose respect for him even though I could afford it? I, 30 female, have been with my husband, 36 male, for 10 years. When we met, we both had crappy jobs and always agreed it would be 50-50 struggling together. Well, as of the last few years particular, this last year my career took off and my pay skyrocketed. This will be my first year making six figures. It's really cool and I've even offered to take on more finances like more of the bills and paying for trips and fun things. But recently my husband made a comment about how soon he won't have to work at his job. I was like, what? Am I the asshole for telling my husband I'd lose respect for him if he stopped working even though I could afford it? Our kids are school age, so there's no need for a full-time parent, and I never agreed to that. So I firmly said, um, I've never dreamt of financially providing for a grown man. If you stop working, I'll lose respect for you. It got very silent, and I asked if he understood, and we were on the same page, and he said yes. I know his dream is to just do his art and make a full-time job out of that, but letting him quit working while I pay for everything feels like leeching. But at the same time, that doesn't sound supportive at all of me. So was I off? My friend hit his daughter and broke her rib. I'm absolutely furious right now. My friend has a daughter who is also in my 7th grade history class. She is the nicest kid in the world and one of the best students in any of my classes. However, this morning she came into my class late and was not herself. Normally, she is raising her hand and engaging with the class, but she had her hoodie up and her head down. She was holding her arm to the side and looked to be in pain. Halfway through class, I walked by her desk to check on her and she looked up at me and had tears in her eyes. 
I brought her outside my classroom and asked her what was wrong, but she was not responding, but she started crying even more. After a couple of more minutes of reassurance, she finally opened up. She woke up late for school and accidentally dropped a glass of water when she was getting ready. My friend, who was her father, punched her twice in the ribs and yelled at her for being clumsy. I asked her if she was hurt and she pulled her hoodie up and her ribs were beginning to bruise. My friend is 6'4 and over 200 pounds. My student is 12 years old and cannot be more than 85 pounds. I asked my colleague in the next class to watch over my class and I took her to the health office where her mother picked her up. When she saw her daughter sitting in pain, she nearly burned the office down. She started cursing my friend's name and said this was the last straw for her. She asked me not to file a report, but I told her I was required to as I was shown evidence of abuse and her daughter used the word abuse, which she begrudgingly understood. I am so mad right now. My friend has always had a short temper, but hitting your child because she dropped a glass is beyond disgusting. My student's mother texted me at noon and said her daughter broke a rib and is going to be out of class until Wednesday. I feel awful for my student. She is such a bright student and is well liked by her peers and now she was having trouble breathing because her father cannot act like an adult. I am ending my friendship with this man. He has been getting on my nerves for a while but I will be damned if I am friends with someone who hits their child.